Brian Moran, founder of Government CIO. Welcome to Government CIO Magazine. Hi, this is Hillary Wax with Government CIO Magazine. Today we are interviewing Sean Kingsbury, the Chief Information Officer at the Recovery, Accountability, and Transparency Board. That's an interesting, interesting question. So we uh, were in an interesting situation where we're a new agency. We stood up uh, uh, with the signing of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, uh, in February of 2009. So we actually had to stand up an entire agency in parallel with standing up um, all of the IT services and also meet um, legal mandates, which made it real interesting, right? So we actually... So, I mean, it's, it's, I think that the real question is past this year to actually, when you look at the journey that we went through from February 2009 to where we are today, to me, it's a, it's a case study and several um, uh, uh, research organizations are actually doing case studies on us, where um, when we initially stood up, we actually had um, borrowed computer systems, right? Borrowed desktops and laptops from GSA, and we were actually working out of the GSA library, right, uh, which was was interesting, right? But it's kind of cool to actually look at where we came from uh, to where we are today. So, uh, at, you know, in February 2009, I mean, our real focus was really on standing up recovery.gov, federal reporting.gov, and meeting our legal mandates, right, priority. In parallel, you know, I was probably employee number nine, right, as we had to hire new employees and what have you. So, you know, literally it was standalone PCs, um, and, you know, standalone, you know, we stood up an exchange server so we could start to get mail services and what have you. But initially, we were running all of that through GSA. Um, so now you look at the journey we went through. Um, from a general support center system perspective, uh, we went from, you know, standalone borrowed systems to best-in-class um, IT systems running, um, you know, we migrated uh, our mail-in collaboration to Microsoft 365 as their first GovCloud customer. Um, we migrated uh, uh, several other key uh, infrastructure systems to Amazon Web Services. We stood up um, probably a one-of-a-kind um, uh, hybrid cloud broker on-prem that actually has a complete stack from a government standpoint of uh, all of the, from secure information assurance running systems like Archer and Proofpoint and protection systems like um, uh, Nest, Tenable Nessus and, and what have you, right? So we've broken up our cloud hub into several, seven key uh, capabilities. So, I mean, it's, we've matured in a whole lot of areas. Uh, and that right there is really, that's the internal side. But then you also get into our law enforcement side of the house. Um, because initially when we stood up, our uh, recovery operations center was really behind the brick and mortar of our agency. So um, with the signing of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2009, uh, 2012, I apologize, um, that um, basically authorized us to uh, look across all federal spending for fraud, waste, and abuse, leveraging the lessons learned of recovery.gov. So what we did is we actually transformed uh, the entire recovery operations center into a private analytic cloud that we deliver as a service to roughly 17 external federal agencies today. Um, doing real desktop as a service coming through our cloud hub stack. Uh, in parallel, you look at the federal systems that we actually stood up, uh, recovery.gov and federal report.gov. Initially, we stood up those, those systems as standalone infrastructure uh, type hardware type systems, right? Since then, we've transformed those systems to be uh, uh, migrated both of them to cloud services. I mean, recovery.gov is the first federal wide system to migrate to, to the cloud, and uh, federal report.gov is running in the CGI Federal's cloud. So we've transformed um, all of our um, uh, information technology services because we started with business. Business drives technology, technology enables business to meet its goals and objectives. So, in regards to agile development methodologies, um, that is the that's that's how we do all of our projects. Um, you know, and I can say that because uh, we we work by 
with constraints that I would say most federal agencies don't live by, meaning we have to actually work to meet interesting deadlines that actually have legal mandates behind it, right? So when you look at it from that perspective, um, you have to, and our timelines are always short just because of the lifespan of the agency. So we adopted um, agile methodologies from the very beginning of how we actually stood up our agency, how we stand up all of our IT systems. Uh, so, I mean, our, from our perspective, that's how we stood up recovery.gov, federal reporting.gov, federal accountability.gov, private cloud infrastructure. We look at it as a build a chapter at a time and don't try and actually plan out the entire project. The goal is to actually look at the big wins and early successes and break it down in, in chapters with, with real results that you can touch in two-week sprints, right, and manage it as we move forward. So um, that's how we stood up. I'm going to say federal accountability. That we pretty much stood that up in three months, and that's a completely virtualized analytic cloud that's been pen tested by DHS, and we deliver it as a service to external agencies. We migrated recovery.gov uh, to the cloud from, um, from the SAVIS data center, uh, from feasibility assessment to production deployment in 22 days. So the only way you can make these types of migrations and implementations actually work is to use agile methodology. But now is agile methodology the um, solution for all projects? No. If I'm dealing with a project that deals with life or death situations, I don't want to make these types of decisions like that, right? So it's the right approach for the right project and then with the, with the expected outcome. Well, you know, if you look at um, if we look at DevOps as in how approaches to go through development cycles to actually get it to a production state, uh, I look at how we um, actually how we stood up recovery.gov. When we initially stood recovery.gov, we stood up in the Savage data center, and when we did that, I mean that's an interesting uh, challenge, right? So anyone that has ever stood up a physical data center, you know that if you have time constraints, the things that you're actually going to wait on are delivery of your assets. And they're never going to come in in the right order uh, for you to meet your timelines, no matter how much planning you do. So what we did is we actually stood up Amazon Web Services um, and we stood up a test dev environment. That way we could actually uh, begin to triage and get key teams to start working immediately. So we got focus groups working, we got the content team and design teams actually working immediately while hardware was still coming in and we could actually go through the process of configuration and really documenting the physical uh, infrastructure and going through all of the appropriate types of testing that you have to do. But it's, it's to me, without that approach to go from test dev environments to a production environment, um, we leveraged cloud services to do that, but I think that's a repeatable process for any, I'm mean, not just any technology project, for any project that you implement. So when you look at mobility, um, really, if you talk to any person that is in industry or federal, they're going to talk about a couple of key topics. It's going to be data, mobile, information assurance, um, and then they're going to actually, and cloud, right? They are, you can't talk one without talking about all of them, right? So with us, it's all about the data, and that's everything, right? Meaning your email. It's really about a way for you to interact with the data email messages that you receive, but now you have to have the dotted line to collaboration. And with that, it's real-time collaboration, meaning exchanging data between two or more people in a way where you can exchange conversations and I can actually see presence. That's data that gives a, has a light to be turned on that shows me that you're online. It's all about the data, right? So you got everything from mail and collaboration to um, look at the 120,000 recipients so, uh, that receive stimulus funds and how we have to interact with all of the agencies within, in the whole life cycle, that again, that's looking at data and, and what have you. Now you start to look at 
oh, and then a fraud, waste, and abuse program, right, where we're delivering uh, analytics as a service externally to 17 federal agencies and our on-prem analysts. In essence, now you get into what does that mean from a cloud standpoint? So cloud is enabling us to ensure that I have the elasticity to support uh, unknown quantities of required performance of the public hitting the website. Also um, internally for us to have an analytic cloud uh, for our team to actually work uh, in a way that we can scale and shrink and all, and all of the self-service capabilities you would expect. But in parallel with that, we have mobile uh, technology when you look at um, we have a mobile app for recovery.gov that enables um, all of the citizens of the country to be able to see in real time um, where the money is actually going. In parallel, when you look at our private analytic cloud, um, it's completely uh, complete VMware infrastructure. Um, so we actually deliver desktop as a service uh, externally to federal agencies. So because we're doing it via VDI, you can actually bring it up on your iPad, iPhone, uh, or what have you, right? So we support mobile computing to actually do these things. From my perspective, if you look at um, what we look at as the digital decade, when you look at how the amount of data that is actually um, the growth of data since 1990 to, to the planned trend to 2021, right? Around 1990, we had less than 20 petabytes per month across the country. When you look at 2021, the trend is roughly 180,000 uh, petabytes per month. Now, what does that mean? There are going to be more users coming online that are going to have expectations, and a lot of this usage is actually due to mobile computing, phones, PDAs, and what have you, right? So there's a big expectation. So if I'm a federal provider of services, uh, I have to be, that has to transform how I solution anything moving into the future. So what we've done is, you know, uh, I've described how we've migrated um, our, you know, two key systems to uh, cloud services, meaning recovery.gov, we migrated to Amazon Web Services. Uh, federal report.gov is actually migrated to um, CGI Federal's web services, cloud services. And internally, we stood up our own private analytic cloud, and we stood up our on-premise uh, cloud hub infrastructure that brokers out to Microsoft, that brokers out to Amazon, as well as enables external customers to come in in a secured fashion to access our analytic private cloud on-premise. So in essence, cloud technology and cloud computing is an enabler. And I think uh, probably two years out, we won't even be talking about cloud because it's going to be an expectation of that is the, the, the stitching that enables us to connect, right? The key is things like a cloud hub and cloud broker that enables the federal government to securely and transparently um, burst between multiple clouds and make it transparent to the customers and keep it customer centric. So in regard to tech stats, we, uh, when you look at how we function uh, as an agency, when we're looking at Rad Beam, um, we we're a small agency. So we have, from the beginning, we've always looked, we did a, we would do a 180 all the time, look back at ourselves and say, um, how are we doing with the projects that are in flight because we use agile methodologies um, to build the systems, right, to get them up and running. And again, my background is, um, you know, PMO director plus, uh, enterprise architecture and what have you, right? So that first part is, what does it mean for us to get the, get the system up and running and do it in a way that from an agile perspective, that's going to help you on, uh, that's going to help that's, that's going to help you build systems wasting less money because you'll be able to see certain issues and risks early in the game and make the appropriate course corrections. So in essence, you redefine your success and get where you need to get because the whole time, the whole project, the whole journey, you're looking at those risk elements. When you look at time, costs, resources, and what have you, 
Um, and then when you get to an operational state, you look at the outcome of that a lot differently um, because now you are looking at it from an O&M. The majority of money that gets wasted on these projects, which is the value add that you get looking at tech stats, is actually standing up these systems, right? Because what you'll see is a lot of these systems go on for years. And they, 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 when you take so long to stand up a big system, in essence, technology changes, time changes, uh, contractors change, and in essence, that just further impacts the outcome of the system, which is going to, you know, it's going to cost you more money. So, I mean, from my perspective, leveraging agile methodologies will keep your eye on the ball, and then you can manage cost control. Lots of innovations uh, you know, came to fruition. Uh, when you look at, um, I'm going to say one, uh, we've, we've proven several things can actually be done. Um, when you look at a, a true data center, a data fusion center, um, that can actually do real oversight uh, from a fraud, waste, and abuse perspective of large initiatives. And we, we proved we were successful, which is why um, we actually now have oversight of the $60 billion of Hurricane uh, Sandy uh, relief fund. Uh, so, and, and a lot of that is it's people, process, and technology. Um, our whole agency, from my perspective, is an innovation. Um, you know, I think the, the, the key innovation behind RATB is um, we've proven that if you get the right people focusing on the right problems, um, the outcome is going to be awesome. Right? Uh, we've proven that you can do some interesting things. Now, in parallel with that, you get the dotted lines that, that, that are that, that kind of outcomes, meaning by having the right people focusing on the right things, and I say that being able to actually prioritize and focus, uh, what you're going to get now is other innovations, right? People thinking about how can I actually do a better job of solving this problem. So if it wasn't for the, the ability for Rat B to literally handpick any federal employee from anywhere in the country to work for the board, um, we would have people to innovate things like, I can say some of the things that I know I played a key role in, is migrate, migrating uh, recovery.gov to uh, the cloud as the first federal um, system moved to the cloud. That opened up doors for other federal agencies to say we can. In parallel with that, when you look at the whole um, cloud hub infrastructure and how we're really delivering VDI for real uh, to external agencies, right? And proving that you can do it. Uh, proving that how you can actually uh, stand up a cloud hub inf infrastructure, augmenting your on-premise infrastructure and provide brokerage capabilities to now uh, several uh, external cloud providers from Microsoft, Amazon, CGI Federal, um, as well as enabling uh, services to our internal uh, private cloud. So, and, and you can continue to build onto that when you start to look at what we've been doing with mobile and how we're dealing with big data in an interesting way where we're actually bringing in terabytes and terabytes of structured and unstructured data and we go through all of the uh, data ingestion into the extraction, theme analysis, and roll all of that up into our virtualized tool set and make it look easy and customer-centric to external customers so they don't see all of that complexity. That whole, this whole process and everything that we've done is an innovation. And, and we're not stopping there. So now we're actually looking forward now. When you look at some of the newer um, releases of VMware, right now they're moving to Project Horizon, where now you can make your, vert, your VMware infrastructure more application-centric. So now our customers will get a, um, I'm going to say, an uh, Apple uh, iPad feel when they log in, they won't necessarily have to get, just get a VDI session. In essence, they can choose from the application store and then from there only get the applications they're interested in in parallel, still getting all of the collaboration, presence, and what have you. So lots of innovations. Quick wins. First off, stop talking tech. Remove all, remove the conversation of technology from the table because that's what causes the lines in the sand when you go into a room to have conversations. Because what, what's going on now is these are business conversations talking about a portfolio 
uh, that each federal agency has an appropriation for, right? And now based on that program of work, that portfolio, their dollars, their goals, their objectives, and then their discrete projects that make up those objectives and goals to meet the strategic vision. So, um, and when you look at things like, it's not, I'm going to do cloud technology, or I'm going to go do Hadoop. No, it's saying, what are, what, are the, what are the expected outcomes for me to meet my goals and objectives of my program of work? And out of there, when you look at the projects and what have you, how can technology enable me to better meet my goals and objectives or mitigate my risk and issues, right? And now in parallel with that, that's the top down. You also have to have a bottom up. When you start to look at innovation workshops, you need to have some skunk, skunk works that are actually working from the bottom up, just showing, looking to see some of the possibilities. And then from those possibilities, that'll feed into the program side, say, you know what, these are some of the other interesting things that we can actually do. That right there to me, that can be a quick win because that puts everybody on the same page. And you can sit down with your CFO. You can sit down with the, the CIO, CFO, uh, general counsel, because you need to have everybody sitting down together and all of the senior executives and all the different lines of business and talk about, you know, now let's talk about how what's the work we're really doing and how can we actually lean forward and take, the, take our uh, department or agency to another level. Next is records management. That's a big deal, right? Because in essence, when you look at some of the capabilities that you actually have, everyone has to deal with records management. That right there is an easy win. Um, nowadays, when you look at the technologies that are actually available today uh, to actually convert um, hard copy documents into electronic documents and be able to index those appropriately and roll them into records management policies. Another quick win. Uh, would be, again, I'm, I'm going to say data, right? When you start to look at big data, literally just get a couple of key people to have them focus on it. And what that's going to do, again, I'm talking bottom up, looking at what are the systems that we're actually running and what's the quality from an integrity perspective of the systems that we're running today. Now, if I had some people that I had just focus on the data and the quality of the systems, how can I now optimize that leveraging some of the best in breed technologies that are in play and focusing on with different people that are the buzzword is, uh, uh, is data scientist, right? But in essence, you know, every federal agency has people that do what's in the definition of a data scientist, but um, the, the agency needs to get serious about focusing on that to get those expected outcomes. And then listen to your people. Because it's all about customer centric. If you work just within, I'm going to say, the CIO organization, you will fail and you will fight and you will fail. The CIO is a true business partner uh, in the department and, or agency and need to act as such. And by doing so, when you start to look past um, that stovepipe, right, and start to look across the federal agency as a whole and communicate and be willing to listen and speak in the language of business not in nuts and bolts, uh, you'll see massive growth in uh, teaming and collaboration. And I think the, you'll see a lot of uh, federal agencies moving at a pace I don't think they had before. So, you know, we're, I mean, we're, we're real lucky to have the people that we have. I mean, we, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we've done without great people. It's, it's the people that are the most important asset in our organization and, probably, and, and it should be looked at across every federal agency and industry. Um, it, because the people are, that's where you get the fresh ideas. That, those are the people that are actually putting in the time to actually do a lot of the hard work to get the work done. My job is to enable them and to keep them honest as well as to keep interesting ideas on the table to help stimulate uh, uh, conversations and thoughts, right? Because you have that whole concept of diversity of thought, diversity of mind, diversity of gender. Um, all of those things come into play uh, to, get, to enable you to actually have a good solution. And we have great leaders here. And it's, it's so many things that come together that enabled us to be successful and continue to be successful uh, from the chair to the executive director 
um, to, uh, again, my CTO, to all of the people, all of the analysts that work the crazy hours to get this done. Um, you know, this is an awesome place to work. Best, I have 22 years of federal service, and this is the, the most fun I've ever had. So.